Signs Satan is trying to lead you as the Holy Spirit. Welcome back to Sacred Revelations, where we delve deep into spiritual truths to help you grow in faith and knowledge. Today, we're talking about something crucial for every believer, the subtle and dangerous ways Satan may attempt to lead you, disguised as the Holy Spirit. Satan is a master deceiver, and his tactics are often more subtle than outright rebellion. In fact, the most dangerous deception occurs when he imitates the voice of the Holy Spirit, leading believers astray through seemingly spiritual or godly thoughts and actions that are rooted in confusion, selfishness, or fear. Understanding how the enemy operates and learning to discern between the voice of God and the schemes of the enemy is vital for every Christian seeking to walk in the truth. Scripture warns us in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14 that Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. His most successful deception is not in overtly pushing us towards sin, but in making us believe that his voice is the Holy Spirit, thus guiding us down a dangerous path without us even realizing it. But God has not left us defenseless. We can learn to discern the signs that Satan is trying to deceive us by pretending to be the Holy Spirit. Let's dive into the key signs that Satan may be trying to lead you under the guise of the Holy Spirit and how to remain anchored in God's truth. 1. Modifying Scripture to Fit Your Desires One of the primary ways Satan works is by twisting God's word to align with our desires rather than transforming us to align with God's will. When Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, Matthew 4, he quoted scripture, but he did so out of context and twisted its meaning. Satan did not attempt to tempt Jesus with lies, but rather with half-truths, distorting God's word to lead him astray. Many believers fall into this trap today. They hear thoughts or guidance that seem to have a scriptural basis, and because it sounds biblical, they assume it must be from God. But Satan is crafty. He knows the Bible, and he knows how to manipulate it to serve his purpose. If you ever find yourself justifying actions that go against the character of God by pulling out isolated verses or distorting the context of scripture to fit your desires, you need to pause and evaluate who is really speaking to you. Satan will always seek to twist scripture in such a way that it becomes self-serving. For example, if you're feeling led to pursue a path that benefits your ego, gratifies your flesh, or justifies something questionable, and you find yourself clinging to specific verses to support this decision, it's time to step back and reconsider. The Holy Spirit never contradicts the whole counsel of God's word. The enemy's goal is to make you a slave to his distortions of truth, leading you to believe that you're following God when you're actually following your own desires. As 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 reminds us, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Scripture is designed to refine us, not to serve our own agendas. To protect yourself from this deception, always seek the full context of any scripture you believe God is using to guide you. Cross-check it with the character of God and ensure that it aligns with the overall teachings of the Bible. When in doubt, seek wise counsel from mature believers to discern whether what you are hearing truly reflects God's will. Two justifying sin. Satan's second tactic is to justify sin under the guise of grace or spiritual liberty. One of his most dangerous lies is that sin isn't a big deal or that because of God's grace, we can indulge in sinful behavior without consequence. The Bible is clear that God hates sin and calls us to holiness. Yet, Satan tries to make us believe that certain sins are justified because God understands or because everyone sins. We see this lie in the Garden of Eden when Satan told Eve that eating from the forbidden tree would make her like God, Genesis 3 verses 4 to 5. It was a half-truth. While eating the fruit would give her knowledge, it would also bring death, separation from God, and immense suffering to humanity. Satan's strategy was to justify disobedience by appealing to Eve's desire for wisdom. Many believers today are falling into the same trap. When we start justifying our sins, be it lying, gossiping, sexual immorality, or harboring unforgiveness, by saying things like, God knows my heart, or I'm only human, we're allowing Satan to distort God's truth. 
It's important to remember that God's grace is not a license to sin. Romans 6 verses 1 to 2 says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? When Satan leads you into justifying your sin, you're stepping away from the transformative power of grace, which not only forgives but empowers you to live a holy life. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin and leads us to repentance, John 16 verse 8, not justification. Whenever you feel led to excuse or minimize your sin rather than confront it and seek God's forgiveness, recognize that it is the enemy trying to lead you away from the path of righteousness. 3. Pushing you to make impulsive decisions. God often works in patience and stillness, whereas Satan pushes for haste and impulse. The enemy knows that if he can get you to act out of anxiety, fear, or pressure, you're more likely to make decisions that are not rooted in God's will. Consider King Saul's mistake in 1 Samuel 13. When Saul felt pressured because the prophet Samuel was delayed and his army was dispersing, he took matters into his own hands and made an unlawful sacrifice. This act of impulsive disobedience cost him God's favor as king. Saul acted out of fear and pressure, rather than waiting patiently on God's timing. Satan thrives in these moments of impatience and anxiety. He whispers, act now, don't wait, solve this problem on your own terms. But God never rushes us into decisions. Psalm 27 verse 14 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Whenever you feel a strong impulse to act immediately out of fear or anxiety, pause. God does not lead us through panic or pressure. The Holy Spirit's guidance is always accompanied by peace, even in the midst of uncertainty. If you find yourself rushing into decisions without clarity or calm, it's a sign that the enemy may be pushing you toward a path of disobedience. 4. Promoting a spirit of condemnation Condemnation and conviction are two very different things. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin to bring us to repentance and restoration. Conviction points out our wrongs, but also offers a way forward through the grace of God. Condemnation, on the other hand, is a tool of Satan. It makes us feel hopeless, worthless, and beyond redemption. Romans 8 verse 1 tells us, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The voice of the Holy Spirit will never shame or condemn you. Instead, he calls you back into God's love and forgiveness, leading you to repentance with hope and restoration. Satan, however, will always remind you of your failures. He accuses you, pointing fingers at your past mistakes, trying to convince you that you're too broken or sinful for God to love or use. This condemnation can lead to feelings of guilt, shame, and despair, driving a wedge between you and God. If you find yourself feeling condemned, unable to shake off the weight of your past sins, and thinking that God is done with you, recognize that it is not the Holy Spirit speaking. This is the enemy's tactic to keep you bound in shame and away from God's redeeming grace. 5. Isolating you from Christian fellowship one of Satan's most subtle tactics is to isolate believers from their Christian community. He knows that when we are disconnected from the body of Christ, we are vulnerable to his attacks. Hebrews 10 verse 25 urges us not to forsake meeting together, but rather to encourage one another. Satan will often whisper thoughts like, you don't need church or no one understands your walk with God, trying to make you feel spiritually superior or too unique for fellowship. He'll also use hurt or offense to drive wedges between you and other believers. However, God has designed us to grow in community. The Holy Spirit leads us into fellowship where we can be sharpened, encouraged, and corrected by other believers. Isolation breeds vulnerability. Like a predator separating a sheep from the flock, Satan seeks to isolate you so he can attack more easily. When you feel led to withdraw from Christian fellowship without a clear reason from God, be on guard. The Holy Spirit may sometimes lead us into seasons of quiet reflection, but he never encourages isolation from the body of Christ. Always test the voice urging you to disconnect 
and ensure it aligns with God's design for fellowship and accountability. 6. Subtle Justifications for Disobedience One of the most insidious tactics Satan uses to lead believers astray is through subtle justifications for disobedience. Often, this doesn't appear as blatant rebellion, but instead as small, seemingly harmless compromises. Satan understands that if he can convince you to bend the rules just slightly, to justify even a minor deviation from God's commands, it can set you on a path toward full-scale disobedience over time. The danger lies not in the overt disobedience itself, but in the subtle erosion of obedience through rationalization and compromise. Satan knows that most committed believers will not instantly fall into outright disobedience or rebellion. Instead, he gradually leads them down a slippery slope of minor compromises. These small steps may seem insignificant at first glance, such as cutting a corner in your ethical standards, justifying an action that goes against your conscience, or choosing to ignore a clear command from Scripture. But they are spiritually dangerous. The Bible warns that a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough, Galatians 5 verse 9. In the same way, small compromises, left unchecked, have the power to corrupt the whole course of your spiritual life. What makes this tactic so effective is that Satan doesn't tempt believers with outright sin, but with what seems reasonable, even spiritual. He will whisper things like, it's not a big deal, everyone else does it, or God will understand your circumstances. These rationalizations are intended to make disobedience seem minor or justifiable, leading you to believe that God's commands don't fully apply in your particular situation. However, Partial obedience or delayed obedience is still disobedience in God's eyes. God calls His people to complete obedience, and compromising His word, no matter how slight it seems, is an act of rebellion. We see a powerful example of this in the life of King Saul. In 1 Samuel 15, God commands Saul to completely destroy the Amalekites and everything they possess as an act of divine judgment. However, instead of following God's instructions fully, Saul spares the best of the Amalekite livestock and King Agag, rationalizing that the best animals could be used for sacrifices to God. Saul's decision to partially obey was still disobedience in God's eyes. When confronted by the prophet Samuel, Saul defended his actions, claiming that he had obeyed God. But Samuel replied with one of the most significant truths about obedience. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. 1 Samuel 15 verses 22 to 23. Saul's partial obedience led to his rejection as king because God desires complete and total obedience, not rationalized disobedience masquerading as devotion. Satan used subtle justifications to convince Saul that sparing some livestock for sacrifice was a good idea, but it was still disobedience. This story serves as a powerful reminder that our attempts to justify disobedience in the name of good intentions or seemingly spiritual reasons still grieve the heart of God. When Satan seeks to lead us into subtle disobedience, the battle often begins in the mind. He plants seeds of doubt about the necessity or applicability of God's commands in our specific circumstances. You may find yourself thinking, Surely God didn't mean I have to obey this command in this situation. Or it's okay if I make this exception just this once. This is where the enemy's deception begins to take root, as you start convincing yourself that slight deviations from God's word are permissible. For example, consider situations where believers justify unethical behavior at work by reasoning that everyone does it, or rationalize moral compromises in relationships with the thought that God knows my heart. These small compromises, though seemingly insignificant, mark the beginning of a gradual shift away from the will of God. When you start bending the truth or compromising your integrity, even in minor ways, you are opening the door for greater disobedience down the line. One of the most dangerous aspects of this tactic is that Satan often disguises disobedience with a spiritual veneer. 
He knows that committed believers are sensitive to God's commands. So he wraps his temptations in what looks like spiritual reasoning. For instance, you might feel tempted to take an unethical shortcut at work, but justify it by saying, I'll give more to the church with the extra money I earn. Or you might justify avoiding a difficult confrontation by telling yourself that God wants me to keep the peace. While these rationalizations may sound good on the surface, they are still disobedience if they involve compromising God's truth. Satan loves to tempt believers with actions that appear noble or sacrificial, but which violate God's commands. Saul's excuse for sparing the Amalekite livestock was that they would be sacrificed to God, but God did not ask for sacrifices. He asked for obedience. It's important to remember that God does not need us to justify disobedience by cloaking it in spiritual-sounding reasons. As Samuel reminded Saul, to obey is better than sacrifice. God is not interested in what we can offer him if it means disobeying his direct commands. Obedience is the highest form of worship, and anything less, no matter how spiritual it seems, is unacceptable to God. Recognizing when Satan is tempting you to justify disobedience requires discernment and a heart that is fully submitted to God. Here are some key ways to guard against this subtle tactic of the enemy. 1. Know God's Word The more familiar you are with Scripture, the harder it is for Satan to twist it or make you rationalize your actions. Study God's commands and understand the spirit behind them. This will equip you to recognize when you're being tempted to bend the rules. 2. Examine your motives. When you're faced with a decision that involves a compromise, ask yourself why you're considering it. Are you trying to justify something because it's easier, more convenient, or more personally beneficial? Or are you genuinely seeking to follow God's will, even if it's difficult? 3. Seek accountability. One of the best ways to guard against subtle disobedience is to invite mature believers into your life who can hold you accountable. When you are tempted to justify disobedience, having trusted friends or mentors who can speak truth into your situation will help you stay on the right path. 4. Pray for discernment. Always seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit in moments of decision. The Holy Spirit will never lead you to disobey God's commands. Pray for wisdom and discernment to clearly distinguish between the voice of the Spirit and the deceptive whispers of the enemy. 5. Resist the urge to compromise. When faced with a temptation to make a small compromise, remember that no act of disobedience is too small to matter to God. Resist the urge to bend the rules, knowing that even small acts of disobedience can lead to greater rebellion. James 4 verse 7 reminds us, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 6. Remember the consequences of disobedience. Reflect on stories like King Saul's to remind yourself of the long-term consequences of partial obedience. Saul's failure to fully obey God's commands ultimately led to his downfall as king. Let this serve as a sober warning of the dangers of justifying disobedience. In conclusion, Satan's tactic of encouraging subtle justifications for disobedience is one of his most effective strategies. It lures believers into a false sense of security, making them think they are still aligned with God's while gradually leading them away from it. To guard against this deception, it is essential to be vigilant, discerning, and fully committed to obeying God's commands, even when it requires sacrifice or goes against personal desires. The Holy Spirit leads us in truth, and by staying close to His voice, we can resist the enemy's attempts to make us compromise. Obedience to God is not about perfection, but about the direction of our hearts. As we seek to fully obey Him, we will grow in faith, wisdom, and spiritual maturity, able to stand firm against the subtle deceptions of the enemy. 7. Encouraging self-reliance over trust in God One of the enemy's most dangerous and subtle tactics is to encourage self-reliance over trust in God. Satan knows that if he can make us depend on our own wisdom, strength, or resources, rather than on God's guidance and provision, he can lead us into a cycle of frustration, failure, and spiritual burnout. This is because human strength is finite, our understanding is limited, and our ability to control circumstances is often out of our hands. However, 
Satan's goal is to tempt believers into believing that they are capable of managing everything on their own, thereby cutting off their reliance on God and weakening their spiritual life. Self-reliance is often seen as a virtue in the world today. We are encouraged to be independent, self-sufficient, and capable of solving our own problems. While there is a place for responsibility and initiative, Satan manipulates this mindset to draw us away from complete dependence on God. Instead of seeking God's direction first, self-reliance pushes us to trust in our own wisdom and understanding. Yet, Scripture clearly warns against this. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. God's word reminds us that our own understanding is flawed and limited, whereas God's wisdom is infinite and perfect. Satan's tactic here is subtle because it appeals to our pride. He whispers thoughts like, you've got this, or you're strong enough to handle it, making us believe that relying on ourselves is the mark of maturity or strength. But this is a dangerous path. It leads us away from the humility required to seek God in every decision and circumstance. Self-reliance might seem empowering at first, but it inevitably leads to exhaustion and spiritual depletion. Without God's guidance and strength, we are operating in our own power, an inadequate substitute for God's omnipotence. When we rely on ourselves instead of God, we place an enormous burden on our shoulders. The weight of trying to figure everything out, solve all of our problems, and control every outcome becomes overwhelming. This often leads to anxiety, stress, and eventually spiritual burnout. We become like a tree trying to grow without water. Eventually, our resources dry up and we find ourselves spiritually parched and unable to bear fruit. Throughout scripture, we see countless examples of what happens when people trust in themselves rather than in God. In the story of King Isaiah, we see a stark example of this. Isaiah was a king who started out by seeking the Lord, and as long as he sought God, he experienced success. However, 2 Chronicles 26 verse 16 says, But after Isaiah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord as God. Isaiah's reliance on his own strength and power led to his downfall. This is a clear reminder that self-reliance, especially in moments of success, can lead to pride, which distances us from God's grace. Satan knows that if he can convince us to trust in ourselves, we are setting ourselves up for failure. By relying on our own wisdom, we blind ourselves to the fact that God's ways and thoughts are higher than ours. Isaiah 55 verses 8-9 to we make decisions based on limited information and human reasoning, which often leads us in the wrong direction. The result is frustration, confusion, and unnecessary hardship, all of which Satan delights in because they pull us further from God's presence. Satan uses three primary tools to promote self-reliance, pride, independence, and fear. These tools are intertwined and work together to create a false sense of strength, autonomy, and urgency. Pride. Pride is at the heart of self-reliance. It makes us believe that we are capable of handling things on our own, without God's help. It whispers lies like, you don't need to bother God with this, or you've been through this before, you can figure it out yourself. Pride convinces us that seeking God is a sign of weakness, but in reality, the greatest strength comes from relying on Him. Independence. Satan pushes the idea of independence making us think that we should be able to stand on our own two feet without relying on anyone, including God. While independence can be a positive trait when it comes to personal responsibility, it becomes dangerous when it excludes dependence on God. We were created to be in relationship with God, to lean on Him, and to walk in His ways. Independence from God leads to spiritual isolation and detachment from His life-giving power. Fear Fear is a powerful motivator that Satan uses to drive us towards self-reliance. When we are afraid, whether it's fear of failure, fear of the unknown, or fear of losing control, we often resort to trying to manage everything ourselves. Fear leads us to panic and make impulsive decisions, rather than waiting on God's direction. Satan knows that when we are afraid, 
We are more likely to rely on ourselves instead of trusting in God's timing and provision. In contrast to Satan's encouragement of self-reliance, the Holy Spirit always leads us to trust in God. The Spirit is our helper, sent to guide us into all truth, John 16, verse 13, and to remind us that we are not alone in our struggles. When we face difficult circumstances, the Holy Spirit prompts us to seek God's wisdom, strength, and provision instead of trying to handle things in our own strength. The Holy Spirit's leading is often quiet, requiring us to pause and listen. In moments of anxiety or stress, when we feel the urge to act on our own, the Spirit gently reminds us to cast our cares on the Lord. 1 Peter 5 verse 7 When we feel overwhelmed, the Spirit brings to mind scriptures like Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7, which encourages us to pray and present our requests to God, promising that His peace will guard our hearts and minds. Trusting in God does not mean passively waiting for Him to do everything for us. Instead, it means actively seeking His guidance and relying on His strength in every situation. The Holy Spirit empowers us to take action, but always in alignment with God's will and direction. He reminds us that we are not meant to carry our burdens alone, but to bring them to God, who can do infinitely more than we could ever accomplish in our own strength. Recognizing the difference between self-reliance and trusting in God can be challenging because the line is often blurred. Here are some signs that Satan may be encouraging you to rely on yourself instead of trusting in God. 1. Feeling overwhelmed. When you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, it's a sign that you're trying to carry burdens that are meant to be laid at God's feet. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11 verse 28. If you're feeling exhausted, it's time to evaluate whether you're relying on yourself or allowing God to carry your burdens. 2. Lack of prayer. When we stop praying about our decisions and challenges, it's often because we believe we can handle them on our own. If your first instinct is to figure things out rather than seek God in prayer, you may be relying on your own understanding instead of trusting in God. 3. Making decisions out of fear. If fear is driving your decisions, rather than faith, it's a sign that you're relying on your own strength. God calls us to walk by faith, not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. And that means trusting Him even when we don't have all the answers. 4. Feeling pride in your achievements. If you find yourself taking credit for your successes without acknowledging God's hand in your life, you may be falling into the trap of self-reliance. Deuteronomy 8 verse 17 warns against this. You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. 5. Spiritual Burnout If you're feeling spiritually depleted, constantly tired, and unable to sustain your spiritual practices, it could be because you're trying to do everything in your own strength. Spiritual burnout often results from self-reliance rather than resting in God's strength. Trusting in God is a daily choice that requires intentionality and surrender. Here are some ways to cultivate a heart that relies on God rather than on yourself. 1. Daily Surrender Start each day by surrendering your plans, desires, and worries to God. Acknowledge that He is in control and that His ways are higher than yours. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide your steps and give you the wisdom to follow God's lead. 2. Stay rooted in Scripture. The more you know God's Word, the more you'll trust in His promises. When challenges arise, you'll have a foundation of truth to stand on. Meditate on verses like Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, Isaiah 40 verse 31, and Psalm 37 verse 5 to remind yourself of God's faithfulness. 3. Pray continually. Make prayer your first response, not your last resort. When you face difficult decisions or stressful situations, take them to God in prayer. Seek His guidance and trust that He will answer according to His perfect will. 4. Develop a heart of gratitude. Cultivate a heart of gratitude by regularly thanking God for His provision, guidance, and strength. Gratitude shifts your focus away from what you can do to what God has already done reminding you of His faithfulness in the past. 5. 
Lean on Christian community. Surround yourself with fellow believers who can encourage you to trust in God. When you're feeling weak or unsure, having a community of faith to support you and pray for you can strengthen your reliance on God. In conclusion, Satan's tactic of encouraging self-reliance is a subtle but powerful tool designed to pull believers away from trusting in God. By appealing to our pride, independence, and fear, Satan seeks to make us believe that we are capable of handling life's challenges on our own. However, the truth is that our strength is limited, and only by trusting in God can we find true peace, wisdom, and direction. The Holy Spirit is our guide and helper, constantly leading us to depend on God in every situation. As we cultivate trust in God through prayer, scripture, and community, we can resist Satan's attempts to make us rely on ourselves. Remember, true strength comes not from self-reliance, but from a heart fully surrendered to God. Let Him carry your burdens, guide your decisions, and strengthen you for the journey ahead. As we conclude this important discussion, it's essential to remember that discernment is key in navigating the spiritual battlefield. Satan's deceptions are subtle, but God has given us everything we need to resist the enemy's schemes. Ephesians 6 verse 11 urges us to put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Stay rooted in God's word, stay connected to your Christian community, and always seek the Holy Spirit's guidance in prayer. If you ever feel unsure about the voice you're hearing, bring it to God in prayer and test it against the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is always with you, guiding you toward truth, peace, and righteousness. Satan may try to disguise himself as the voice of God, but the more you grow in relationship with the Lord, the clearer his voice will become. Thank you for joining us on Sacred Revelations today. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more in-depth teachings. Stay strong in the Lord, and may his voice be the only one you follow.